Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here let's learn how to take a screenshot in Unity. We're going to look at an extremely simple method, just literally one line of code and it saves a screenshot, and then we're going to look at a more advanced method which is also more versatile. We can take a screenshot of the whole screen or only parts of it and use that same logic to convert any part of our camera into a simple texture which we can then use to build some really interesting things. We can choose to include the UI or not, we can take a super resolution screenshot, and we're going to look at the difference between the old built-in render pipeline and the new ones URP and AGRP. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using C Sharp just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so I've already made this video once before a couple of years ago. That video is using the built-in render pipeline, so if you're using that, you can go watch that video. But if you're using the Universal Render Pipeline or the High Definition Render Pipeline, then there's some slight changes, so keep watching the video. And here I will also mention multiple methods. Okay, so first of all, here is my demo scene. It's just a static scene. This one is from the Polygon High Spec if you want to get it. And also note how in this scene I've got a UI element up here. This is going to be important. So I want to be able to press a button and take a screenshot. Now, if what you want is an exact screenshot, then there's actually a super simple method, which I didn't actually cover in that other video. So let's just make a script. Okay, so let's listen to a simple key press. Now here we can use the class screen capture. And in here, as you can see, we've got various functions for taking a screenshot. You can do one which takes a screenshot and saves it on a render texture another one on a textured 2D, and final one, just take it and save it to a file immediately. So this one truly is the simplest method. You just call on that and pass in a file name. So let's say game screenshot.png. And that's it, just one line of code, let's test. So here I am and I press the button. And yep, here is my project folder and over here I've got the game screenshot. And yep, it is indeed the game screenshot. So this truly is the simplest method for taking a complete screenshot. Also note how it also includes the UI. And one more thing on the size of this screenshot. If you look in the properties, you can see this is a 1080p screenshot. And the reason for that is because over here on the game window, I select 1080p. But if your players were using a different resolution, then that would be the size. Okay, so this truly is the simplest method, just a single line of code. But on this function, you also have another optional parameter. You've got the super size. So this is going to multiply the resolution by this amount. So for example, let's say four. Now run in the game and take a screenshot again. And yep, here's my screenshot, now it's 16 megabytes. And if I look in the properties, now it's four times 1080p. So this can be useful only if you're trying to take a screenshot of your game for print and you need a massive resolution. So that's one scenario where you could use the supersize parameter. Also, like I said, note how with this method, it automatically captures the UI. But if you didn't want that, then you could simply disable the canvas just before taking the screenshot. Okay, so this is the super quick method, literally just one line of code. Now let's look at a more advanced method, which also allows for more interesting use cases. Now the main difference for the two methods that we're going to see is that one captures the UI and the other does not. So for the first method, we actually need to create a coroutine. And now the reason why this has to be a coroutine is because we're going to do a yield return and then do a new wait for end of frame. What this line does is it's going to pause the execution of this coroutine until the entire frame finishes rendering. So the camera is going to render the image, render all of the effects, the UI, and then finally, after all of that, the code continues from here. So after that happens, then we can run our screenshot logic. Now, the first thing we need is a texture 2D to hold our resulting image. So in order to create, we need a width and height. So if you want to make a screenshot of the exact same size, then you can simply define it as a screen width and height. Next up for the format, now this is pretty important. If your screenshot comes out looking gray, then take a look at the format. In my case, I normally tend to use ARGB32. And finally, do you want MIP maps or not? Now for a screenshot, we probably don't need them, but if later on you're using this for some other use cases, then maybe you might want them. But again, in this case, really just leave it on false. Okay, so we have created our screenshot texture, our texture 2D. And now the function that we're going to use to record the camera view onto this texture is we go into our screenshot texture and we call read pixels. 
So this one takes a rectangle of the area that we want to capture. So again, let's build one with the screen dimensions. And then for the destination X and Y, we want to print this onto the texture on the lower left corner. So let's use just that. And then finally, we can do the screenshot texture called dot apply to apply all changes. Okay, so that's it. Now our texture will have the view of the screen. Now with this done, all we really need to do is save it. And before we save, we need to convert this into an actual savable format. So for that, thankfully, we can use the screenshot texture and just run encode to PNG or any of the others, but PNG is usually pretty good. So this returns a byte array. And then with the byte array, you can simply go into system.io.file.writeAllBytes and just write in this byte array. All right, so I'm just using the application.data path. So this is the path to the game data folder. And then inside just camera screenshot.png. Okay, so that's it. All we need to do is run this coroutine. So just up here, when we press the button, start coroutine and start this coroutine. Okay, so let's test. Okay, here I am and press the button. And if I look in this case inside of the assets folder, there it is, the camera screenshot. And yep, there it is, there's our screenshot. So as you can see, this method contains an exactly perfect screenshot. So it has all of the camera view as well as the UI. Now again, like I said previously, if you didn't want the UI, you could disable the canvas like I mentioned in that other method, or you can instead use the next method. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So for this next method, that's where it comes the difference on URP and AGRP as compared to the old built-in render pipeline. So in the screenshot video, this is where I then use the function on post render. So this one was called when the frame finishes rendering. However, this function really only runs on the built-in render pipeline. So if you're using URP or AGRP, then this will never be called. So the alternative is instead to subscribe to a callback on the render pipeline. So first we need to add using unity engine dot rendering. And then we can just go make a simple awake then access the render pipeline manager. And now here we've got all kinds of callbacks. So this one and camera rendering will be called when the camera finishes all the rendering. So we can just add a callback onto this one. And as usual, when subscribing to a callback or an event, make sure you handle some cleanup. So in this case, you could either add on awake and on destroy and over here unsubscribe, or alternatively, instead of these two, just on enable on enable, on disable, so on that one subscribe, and on this one unsubscribe. Okay, so we've got this function, and now here we can just run the normal screenshot logic. So let's just copy this, and just paste it in there, and all the screenshot logic is exactly the same. However, again, this one is a callback on the render pipeline, so this will actually be called on every single frame. Now, that's not what we want, so let's add a simple boolean. So just a simple boolean, when we press the button, set it to true, over here, if it is true, set it to false and take a screenshot. Okay, so with that done, we can now test. So here we are, let's press the button. There you go, I took a screenshot. And here is the camera screenshot. And yep, there we have our screenshot. Now note how with this method, it only has the camera view. So the UI is not displayed. That is the one big difference when compared to the previous method. So the previous method using a coroutine, it waits for the end of frame and then it reads the whole thing, whereas this one runs after the camera and before the UI, so that is why the UI is not included. Now, like I said, these last two methods, they are much more versatile than this one, which is just a single line of code. So first of all, you don't have to take an entire screenshot of the whole screen. So for example, if you only want to capture the middle or just a single corner, then over here, just something like 256. So if we run this and take the screenshot, and yep, there's the camera screenshot. It's just a 256 by 256 texture. And as you can see, it contains just that little corner. So using the first method it takes a full screenshot, but with this one, you have control over exactly what part of the screen do you want to record. In order to select which part you want to record, you really just need to play around both the width and height. And over here on the right, just modify the X and Y for the starting pixels. So you can grab any part of your screen. Also, yet another method somewhat related to this is you should know about render textures, which I covered in detail in another video. That one allows you to get the view of any camera you want and do something with it. So maybe another camera with a different post-processing placed on a different part of the map. For example, go watch my video on how to save a screenshot along with the save file. In there, I cover how you can save a view of a different camera in order to make the saved image different from what the main camera sees. 
Then of course, with whatever texture you grab from this approach, you could then show it in a UI element or maybe feed it to a shader or something like that. So as you can see, this last approach, which composed of these two methods, this one is more complex, but also is much more versatile. But if all you want is just a single screenshot, then a single line of code will do. Now go ahead and implement either one or both of these methods in your game. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.